So now we turn to some of the universal limitations and exceptions that exist within copyright laws. So recall here as we move into the subject of limitations and exceptions what the purpose of copyright law is. Copyright exists to prevent competing uses of protected works. We sometimes think of these as public uses, uses that can substitute for the original work in a way that harms the market for the work. Under this general theory, uses of a work that cannot substitute for the work in the market, for instance, because they're confined only to a use in the home, like copying your CD to your hard drive, that these kind of private uses should not be protected. Why? Because that use does not share the work with anyone in a way that can displace a sale. It does no harm. In the last section, we showed that the definitions of exclusive right appear to protect many uses such as the private at home use I just mentioned. They block any reproduction in any manner, any form, one could add in any place. But that use of copying your CD to your computer is lawful in probably every country in the world. Why? Because of the presence of exceptions to copyright. So the structure of copyright is that we have very broad rights, very broad definitions of works, and then we tailor those rights to the public interest and to the purposes of copyright through exceptions to those scope of rights. Some of the most important limitations and exceptions to copyright are required by the same international agreements that require those broad exemptions, including the Berne Convention and TRIPS. So we refer to these as universal limitations and exceptions, and I want to cover the most important of those now. The first important exception required by international law, and often by freedom of expression rights, is the exclusion of facts from the scope of copyright protection. All copyright laws around the world apply only to original expression, not to the facts conveyed by that expression. So the Berne Convention requires this distinction expressly, excluding news of the day and miscellaneous facts having the character of mere items of press information from coverage by the convention. The World Trade Organization Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights goes further. So it requires what is often referred to as the idea-expression dichotomy. TRIPS requires that copyright protection shall extend to expressions and not to ideas, procedures, methods of operation, or mathematical concepts as such. It can't extend to the facts or ideas within that work. So a basic example of the difference between facts and expression could be an article about a sports tournament and the score from the tournament reported in the article. The score might be in the article and it might be where you got that information. The newspaper has an exclusive right over the article. That is an original expression of the sports writer describing the event. So you cannot repost that article to your own competing news outlet without permission. You'd have to get a license for that. But what about the score? The score is a fact. You can use that fact freely, even if you can't copy the article, and even if you are competing with the copyright holder. The copyright holder cannot exclude you from reporting that fact in your own sports article, even if you're very intent is to substitute for their article in the market for yours. So here's a general proposition that we think is true in every country. Copyright does not prohibit the mining of protected works for facts about or from those works. You can mine works for sports scores and report out those scores to the public, at least in its essence. The problem for TDM researchers is not the act of reporting out or finding the facts within them. The problem is how you do that without copying the protected expression itself. 
in the case of the sports article and the sports score, the assumption is that you're reading that article and then reporting out the score through a new article, through typing it out, whatever. You didn't need to make a reproduction of that work in order to find the fact within it. So we all admit that you can at least do that. You can read and you can report facts out from what you read. The question is, can you mine the article through a process that itself makes reproductions of the article in the first instance? If you have to copy the work to mine it for its facts, then you may need more than the idea expression dichotomy. International law also requires the right of quotation. So Byrne does not go into a lot of detail about what the quotation right really means. That's the full <coughs> scope of the quotation right as it appears in Byrne. We can generally assume that it means only the use of an excerpt of the work, not the whole work, by virtue of the use of the word quotation. But this is an important limit to the laws like Germany that state the copyright protects reproduction of a work in any quantity. The mandatory exception to that broad right is one for quotation. A law may claim in the scope of rights that all quantities are protected, but it has to have an exception to that for use for quotation. Uh, so what's a quotation? So some national copyright laws authorize quotation for any purpose. So South Africa's quotation right is an example. Some explicitly, many actually, explicitly exempt quotation for research or private study or scholarship. The most limited quotation rights require criticism or review of the work quoted rather than illustration of a point to criticize or review another work, for instance. So let me say that again, the most limited quotation rights require criticism or review of the work being quoted. So pause there and ask yourself, and you can note in your worksheet, whether a quotation exception limited to criticism and review of the work quoted would be sufficient to authorize the quotes that you wanna make for publication and validation purposes of your project. If so, then you're going to have at least that much of a quotation right in every country in the world. So those are really the two main applicable international minimum standards for limitations and exceptions. That's both the good news and the bad news. The good news is that those two exceptions are very important to many of the TDM activities you want to take. The bad news is it probably doesn't cover all of them. So if you go back and look at your worksheet now and fill out the third column, just with the mandatory minimums in international law, which columns are still open? Which ones have we not talked about yet? So beyond the mandatory exceptions and limitations, international law co leaves countries largely free to craft exceptions for uses that do not harm the interests of copyright protection. So thinking back again what the purpose of copyright protection is, it's more or less described here. That is, this is the so-called three-step test in Bern. That three-step test allows countries to permit any use in any special case, that's the first step, that does not conflict with a normal exploitation of the work, that's the second step, and it does not unreasonably prejudice the legitimate interests of the author. That's the third step. So that should sound a lot like the fair use factors you learned about with respect to US law. It also tracks the purpose of copyright in only protecting against actions that harm the market for the work. The trick is that some, but not all, countries take full advantage of this flexibility to exempt all non-competitive uses from copyright control. We're gonna look at that next. Some but not all countries exempt all non-competitive uses from copyright control. So before we move to the next section, review your worksheet and fill out as much as a third column through the application of these universal exceptions to copyright protection as you can. What do you have left? You'll need to fill in the empty spaces in your worksheet in the next section or several sections that begin analyzing specific laws in specific countries. 
Here, the law gets a little more complicated and a lot less universal.